thank you for this morning, Father. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise, Father. Lord, this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, O oh Father. I bring every person that is found in your presence, God. Father, your word says that you know us by the hair on our head. You know every circumstance, every situation that they find in themselves in, O oh God. Lord, your word says, even if I make my bed in hell, even there you will find me. Lord, your word says that uh, even if I, if I live or dwell in, out in the outermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will reach me. Father, even there your right hand will lift me up, Father. Lord, nothing is impossible for you today. Our faith and our hope is in you, is in the living God this morning, Father. Lord, let your people be encouraged to know, Father, nothing is impossible for you, O oh God. We bring Pastor Noel and Pastor Portia. We bring the praise and worship. We bring the workers, Father, as they give of themselves sacrificially week after week, O oh God. I pray for an abundance of joy over them. For your word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Father, your joy will strengthen them, Father, to carry on on this walk. I pray you'll bless us, cover us, and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glorify you, Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord in this place.
give you all the glory, give you all the praise, give you all the glory, you alone deserve it. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, well, we give you all we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. the Lord. We magnify and glorify your name this morning, holy God. Thank you, God, that we can be standing here today in your presence, Lord. Thank you, God, that freely we can praise you. Freely we can lift up our voice to you, God. Your word says, Lord, that you hear our every cry. You hear every prayer, oh God. You hear every heart's desire, Lord. As we wait patiently on you this morning, God, we know, God, that you would answer our prayers. We know, God, that you would meet us at our point of need. You are the God who hears. You are the God who answers by fire. You are the God who answers by fire. You are the great I am. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our Prince of Peace. You are the God who answers by fire this morning, Lord. Come and consume our sacrifice of praise. Come and consume our sacrifice of worship. You are the God who answers by fire. You are Jehovah, our God. You are the great I am. Be exalted in this place, Lord. Be exalted in this place, oh God, as we wait on you, God, as
Jesus, we wait on you, mighty God. Be exalted in this place. As we wait on you, O oh God, be lifted up in this place. As we wait on you, mighty God, be enthroned in this place, God. Be enthroned in this place, God. Be magnified in this place, O oh God. We wait on you this morning, Lord. We wait on you this morning, God. With arms open wide, we wait on you, Lord. With hearts full of praise, we wait on you, God. We trust in you this morning, Lord. We know, Lord, those who trust in you will never be disappointed. You have never failed us, God, and you won't start now. You have never failed us, God, and you won't start now. Oh, you have never failed us, God, and you won't start now, Lord. This morning, I want to encourage you with the Word of God. The Word of God says in 1 Samuel 12, verse 16, Now therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Come on, the Word of God says, Now stand and see this great thing. Are you expecting a great thing from the Lord? Are you expecting a marvelous thing from the Lord? Just stand and see. Just stand and see what the Lord is going to do before your eyes. Come on. Be excited. Be thankful. Be grateful. God is going to do something exciting before your very eyes. The word says now, therefore, stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Amen. Come on, let's worship his holy name. Worship his holy name. And I've tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it. Then you choose someone like me. To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it And you take the broken things And raise them to glory Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who get it all, oh, it all. And now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. This is my victory. Every battle you've won, I am, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Crashing down 
Hi everyone, a warm welcome to the family church. We trust that you're having a blessed time thus far. My name is Hayden. And I am Sahila. Truly, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And we are so glad to bring forth the announcements for this week. But before we head into that, if you are a first time visitor here, then please see our Family Connect team after the service. Albert, Shanice and Linda will be of great service to you. Well, it's an honor to have you join us today. So, our announcements for this week are as follows. Tuesday nights is our family altar at 7 p.m. And like me, I'm sure you have all been waiting for the special nights where we come together to worship, bringing forth our requests unto the Lord and trusting Him to do a great thing in our lives. I know I'm trusting Him for some things in my life. And if you are too, then be sure to join us. Gates will be open at 6 p.m. as well as our coffee shop. For those of you that don't know, the Family Church has its own wall of remembrance at the Stellawood Cemetery. This facility is open to the body of Christ. And with the shortage of graves in our city, you can worry no more about your loved ones when they pass. Our wall contains several niches that would house the remains of your loved ones for a lifetime. So, if you would like to know more on how you can utilize the wall, then contact our office on 031-577-0563 or WhatsApp us on 083-552-5259. You know, technology has provided a social platform where we are able to reach people all across the globe, sharing the love of God and His infallible Word. So, if you're not following us yet, then be sure to do so now and stay connected with us during the week. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at The Family Church Delvin. If you have lost an item at church, kindly inquire at the information desk. The Family Church. Serving. And building. The, the multi-generational multi family. family.
Good morning, everybody. I want to greet everyone in the wonderful and powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's good to be in the house of God this morning. If you have your Bibles, uh, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 19 to 21. I'm also reading from the Amplified Version. <coughs> the Bible says, do not and heap up and store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and worm consume and destroy and where thieves break in through and steal. But gather and heap up and store for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust no worm can consume and destroy and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I think the key word there is number, uh, verse number 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what is Jesus telling us today? Is he, is he telling us to take all your gold and silver, diamonds, money and everything and give it away? No, by no means not. Let's not be confused by that. Yeah. Jesus is, is happy with that. That you bless because he says, a wit above all that you prosper just as your soul prospers. So he wants us to be blessed. He's not telling us to do that, but what he's saying us is do not set your heart on the things of this world. It's a heart thing. In other words, don't let your heart be corrupted by the world system. And it's very easy for your heart to be corrupted. And we need to guard our hearts at all time that we do not be corrupted. The Bible says this, the moths, they will eat your fabric. They will eat your clothes. The rust will eat, all, eat away the metals. The worm will eat away all the organic substances and the wood. And finally, whatever is left over, the thieves will come and steal it. So this world is full of evil. That's what he's telling us. So you look, if you look at a rich man who's got a lot of possessions, a lot of wealth and everything, there's a lot of people that are scheming and plotting how to steal it. Remember that. So what does it tell you? The things of this world is only temporal. But the things of God is eternal. Jesus is urging us here today. Let us invest into the kingdom of God. And Jesus always preached, but he always said, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. So that is the unseen realm. We haven't seen it, but he's establishing. He wants us to establish, or he came to establish his kingdom of God. And we are his representatives on earth. We need to continue with that. Rather than focusing on the, the world system, which is led by who? Run by who? The prince of this world, who is Satan himself. The kingdom of heaven. What are the benefits? You may ask me today, Stanley, what's the benefits in the kingdom of heaven? We haven't seen much. But the Bible says it all here today. John 14, there are many mansions that are prepared for you. Mansions that you haven't seen. This, the worldly mansions are nothing compared to what is, what's up there. Streets that are paved with translucent gold. Gold that you haven't seen on this earth before. John 14. John 3.16, eternal life. Everyone knows that scripture. John 10.20. Rejoice, Jesus said to the disciples, Rejoice not that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. How many of, of us know that we need to have citizenship in heaven? That's the most important thing, have citizenship in heaven. And finally, how many of you know that when we get up there, God is going to give us crowns? There's so many crowns, the crowns of, crown of life, crown of righteousness, crown of rejoicing, crown of glory, and the incorruptible crown. That ties in with what I said to you earlier. Your heart must not be corrupted by the things of this earth because your soul is weak. How do we do that? By following all the ordinances in the Bible. Everything is here. If you want to heap up treasures in heaven, it's all here in the Bible. Just follow all the ordinances in the Bible, all the commandments. Be kind, have a tender heart. Jesus always had empathy for people. Those who were blind, he healed. Turned the water into wine. He healed the deaf. 
the person that was, was had many demons in him, he cast them out. Have empathy. Have a tender heart. Give. Continuously give. Give into your local church. Give into the, so into the kingdom of God. Kindness. In conclusion, what Jesus is saying that if you continuously give into the kingdom of God, give into your local church, you're proving to him that your heart is not corrupted. You're proving to him that your heart is not focused on the world system, but focused on the kingdom of God. Amen. I trust that as we give, we shall be blessed. Let's close our eyes today and bow our heads. Father, we come to you today in the mighty and powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today that you are Yahweh. You are God in heaven. Jesus Christ, you are Yeshua, our Savior and Redeemer. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place today. We say, come, fill this place with your presence. We thank you for your word, God. So easy for us to be corrupted by the things of this world. We pray, help us to guard our heart today. As we give, it shall be given unto us. Press down, shake it together, running over. There are many benefits, God, that are in heaven. And we thank you, Lord, that the most important thing is that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We pray your people be blessed today as they give. And I pray whatever their needs are today, you know what it is. You're going to provide, you're going to meet with every single need and answer every prayer today. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Raise your hands, every one of you. And say, Lord, I wait on you today. Come on, say it after me. Say, Lord, I wait on you today. Come on, say, Lord, I wait on you today. Shall we do their strength? They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. Lord, some of us are saying, when is my eagle experience? Some of us are saying, Lord, when is my time to soar with you? Oh, Lord, help us, God. Speak to us, God. Reveal to us, God. Yeah. Shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up, mount up. They shall mount up with wings like that of an eagle. My time has come, my time has come, my time has come, Lord, for in your time, you make it all beautiful, Lord, you make all things, all things, all things, all things new, in your time. Oh yeah 
time. Sing, sing that song. You make all things beautiful in your time. Lord, you show me every day as you teaching me your ways that you do just what you say in your time in your time in your time you make all things beautiful in your As you teaching me your ways, that you do just what you say in your time for the last time in your time. time you make all things you make all things beautiful in your time Lord you show me Lord you show me yeah. Time. Wait on the Lord. I'm gonna wait on you, Lord. Sing, sing. Sing, I'm gonna wait on you, Lord. I've trusted your goodness. Sing. I'm trusting your Oh, I'm gonna wait on you. How many of you are in a time of waiting today? How many of you are waiting on God today to move and to do everything that He has promised? Father, I pray today that as I bring every person that is here today before you, I pray, God, that you will bring them to a place of strength. Bring them, O oh God, to a place of understanding. But above all, O oh God, bring them to a place of peace. To know that in your time, you make everything beautiful. And oh God, let us understand the power of your beauty. Let us know that beauty is of oh God that which you have made, you have purposed. Beauty doesn't rest in our eyes, but beauty rests in your eyes. And oh God, what is on this world uh, may seem beautiful. But oh God, the things in the spirit uh, are even more beautiful. And I pray today, God, bring the revelation to somebody today. Somebody that is in waiting. Come on, pray, pray, pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, today that there will be a breakthrough. That somebody here is going to receive, receive. Oh, Mount Parazam, Mount Parazam, the Lord who breaks forth, the Lord who breaks forth. I pray breakthrough over your health. I pray breakthrough today over your marriage. 
I pray breakthrough today over your situation at jobs, on the job, in your business. I pray breakthrough over your finances. I pray breakthrough today. Bow parasam, bow parasam. Our time of waiting, God, is in you, is in you, is in you, is in you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Father, now I pray, bless your word and let it come and change the direction that we are heading. For God, it is only your word that can put us in the direction that you want us to be. And there's only one direction and that is your direction. There's only one way and that is your way. It is the way of Jesus. It is the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray let your word come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word come alive today. In the name of Jesus, let your word come alive today. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us, O God. Give us once again an open heaven. Change our hearts that are fixed and stony and turn it to hearts of flesh. As your seed is going to fall, as I prophesy today on good ground. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Lord. You may take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to our 8 a.m. celebration. And for those of you that are here, and I can see that some of you are affected by the comrades, and I hope that you are online. Let's give everybody online a shout of praise. Come on, let's give them and encourage them. And we look forward to seeing you next week back in the house of God. So this morning, um, we left home pretty early because we're on that comrades route and I was reminded whilst driving here today about that route. But before I get into that, the family altar on Tuesday, family altar Tuesday, you sp spoke to me something that Stan mentioned a little bit about today. So I can see why he's sitting next to you because he's catching some of that kingdom understanding. So Pastor Bob, you mentioned something that uh, we understand some people understand many people don't understand and that is the subject about the kingdom of God and how we are kingdom citizens remember I remember many years ago when uh, in the previous church my pastor said then and when we're praying he says don't pray for your country with your passport in your back pocket that's hypocrisy. Because people want to leave the country and complain about the country and all that, and you want to still pray. If you want to go, go. If you want to pray, pray. Then you know you're here to stay. So Tuesday night is the family altar. We're going to have a time of prayer. I'm expecting to see every one of you here. We're going to be praying over families, marriages, your situations, whatever your need is. I want you to send in your prayer request to the church phone and we're going to pray. And I'm going to give you some time. I will talk to you. I want you to get the understanding of the kingdom and what it means to be a citizen. Is that okay? So uh, you get ready for that and I will talk to you because unless you understand your position, you will never walk in the element of authority. Can someone say amen? amen. You won't be in that place of authority unless you understand your position. So Tuesday night, family altar, I'm expecting to see every one of you here as we come again under an open heaven. So today is the Comrades Marathon. They started at 5.30, which is what? Five, six, seven, eight, but three hours already running. If I was running, where would I be? Maybe still in Maritzburg. 
But uh, nevertheless, I um, remember from, I was talking to the brothers this morning, and my parents used to take us as children to watch the starting of the comrades in Peter Maritzburg because we stayed there. And after we finished start, watch the start, we'll get into the car and drive down to Durban to watch the completion. And um, I was so excited uh, watching all of that. And eventually as I grew and after all going through life and getting into work, I started to speak to the staff about the comrades and explain and use that analogy, Ron, about how you start a race somewhere and you end somewhere. You see, every one of us knows the day we were born. Every one of you knows that. But none of you know the day when God is going to call you home. Can you say amen? Can, uh, can't we be grateful for that? That I don't know when God's going to call me, but I know that is <laughs> the day I was born. Because if you know the day you're going to die, man, imagine how life will be. How life will be if you know the day you're going to die. So the Comrades Marathon starts in Peter Maritzburg and it ends in Durban on that end. And I used to tell the staff how you must start to... Plan yourself, plan your month, plan your quarter, plan your half and your, your annual. And so you must know during each time of the year where you should be in order of your goals and also your targets. And they used to start to track it and we used to put measurements in place. And how many of you know here today that measurements in life are very important? Amen? If you don't have measurements as an individual, there's a strong chance that you are not going to Get to where you ought to be because you are almost running blind. Is that okay? Does it make sense what I'm saying? You have to put measurements in place and there has to be measurables in place that are realistic and not too high and not too low. And you must know your ability. There has to be an element of faith. And so when I, we were driving and coming today and I'm watching all the routes and I'm seeing all the excitement on the road. By the way, we have to put that together um, Thinking this morning as we, there's a lot that I've got going on in this head. And we're going to plan something big for the comrades in maybe next year or the year after. So I want all of you to be part of that. Wouldn't it be nice? Let me not say too much. But let's see what the Lord will enable us to do. We have to be relevant. Touch where God wants us to touch. Amen. Anyone running family members? No, no. No family members. Friends, maybe? Yes, okay. So, I want to talk to you today about the subject, and uh, uh, Darren, you helped me there. Wait, I'm handling this in God's waiting room. And I appreciate the songs that were sung today, and all of that, and getting you ready for understanding the power of waiting. And oftentimes, what happens is, we tend to get ahead of ourselves, we tend to run ahead of ourselves only to realize later on that we have wasted valuable time had we sat in God's waiting room, God would have worked it out beautiful as his word has said. I'll never forget our eldest daughter whose name is Elena, her name means beautiful and there's a reason why we gave her that name. Why did we give her that name? See, I'm testing my wife. She knows. Because it means beautiful. And because the word of God came, that in his time he makes all things beautiful. And we had suffered two miscarriages after our firstborn. And there was a seven year gap. And we said, God, what is happening? And in seven years, God eventually brought our eldest child. And Elena was born. And hence the name Elena, which means beautiful. And so God always knows better. Can somebody say amen? amen? And what happens is life comes and we hear things, we learn things, we see things, world teaches us things, and then we start to draw our own conclusions and the enemy gets us into a trap that we know better. And it seems like sometimes all our life we spent waiting. Some of you are here today and even online and you think, but God, when is it going to be my time? Let me tell you, right now is your time. Say amen. amen. Waiting to discover your purpose, waiting for your answers to prayer, waiting for a spouse, a husband or a wife, waiting for healing or whatever the case may be. 
So why is it important for us to be patient? Because that is the whole subject. Why would God want us to be patient? There has to be a reason that God wants us to be patient. So let's start with this first fact. Can I settle everything, Jeff, and just humble all of us today? God is patient with us first. If God wasn't patient with me, <laughs> I'd be burning somewhere. But God is patient with me and he is patient with you. So let's start on that platform. And I'm going to give you hope in God's word today that your time is coming. Somebody say amen. amen. And how many times have we just ignored God? And sometimes deliberately. And I was praying the other day. And I was praying with some people. And as I was praying... And we were in the time before I prayed, the Holy Spirit was just leading me. And generally when I pray, I say, God, help us to, 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 we pray for the known sins. We pray for the unknown sins. Then there's sins of omission and sins of commission. Then there's overt and covert. You heard those words. Somebody taught me that. Who heard those words? You know what's covert? Covert operations. You know when they perform. You don't know, haven't heard that word? When the police do covert operations, undercover, and then there's overt. And then there's intentional and unintentional. And as I were praying, and I was saying, God, all those intentional sins, all those sins that I have done, that we have done knowingly, God, help us to change our thinking and give us the revelation, not just a abracadabra and then it's going to work. Let us understand the power of walking in the discipline of your word to see the fruit so that we can walk in a greater measure of authority. Now I'm not saying God does not do things supernaturally, but as you grow in God, the supernatural things tend to slow down. And there is a reason why the supernatural things tend to slow down. It's because God is working on the inside and he's waiting to prepare on the inside because every supernatural blessing has to glorify God. Can somebody say amen? Because the world we live in today is in such a place where everything is glorifying man and not glorifying God. You go look at it. You go have a look at life. You go have a look at some of the temptations that are out there. How easy it is to glorify man and take the glory away from God. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise. As some understand slowness, instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Say amen. amen. And besides the fact that God is way more, far more patient with us than we are with Him or with other people in our circles, patience demonstrates two things. Say faith and trust. Patience in our lives demonstrates those two things. It demonstrates our faith and it demonstrates our trust. Because if I'm running ahead of my time, I am not trusting in God. I am trusting in my own natural ability and what I think is better than God's way. And every one of us make that mistake somewhere along the line and we get to a place where we want to run ahead of our time. Many times when I was growing up in the corporate industry, secular world and working, I used to be cautioned by some of the senior management and execs. They'll say, Theophilus, you are running ahead of your time. Slow down, son, slow down, son. And they used to tell me those things. And I used to think, but why are you telling me I want to do the things? 
But there's a time to do certain things. Sometimes the zeal on the inside of us can also mess things up. Our zeal has to be uh, harnessed. Our zeal has to be well thought of. And we cannot go and make foolish mistakes. And listening to people that have been there, done that, got the t-shirt. They have explained why certain things cannot be done. Because they've already tried it and it did not work. Sometimes... Our learning comes from those that are senior to us. Can someone say amen? amen? That starts with our parents. Young people in the church, young people online, if your mother and father or grandparents say this and that, listen to them. Don't think because you got now degrees and all that and you're so hot in your degrees that you know better. Sometimes the right school, you know the old school and the right school? The right school works better. You've got to just sit and listen because God is teaching us lessons in these seasons of waiting. The other day, we were having a little discussion at home and we put chairs outside. So Portia and I were there and my parents were there and kids. And so we finished. I had a little discussion and then we all got up and my father said, no, sit down. <laughs> and I said, Ooh -hoo. and I sat down quickly and I said, let me listen. And I was rushing to go because I had work to do. And I said, man, you know, even the pastors can be tested too. And um, patience, when we wait patiently for the Lord, this is what we are doing. Remember I said faith and trust. So we are exercising our faith in God. Is that, isn't that good? When you're waiting on God, you are exercising your faith in Him. And Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith... It's impossible to please God. And so, if waiting on God is, if patience with God is waiting on Him and is showing faith, then God is pleased in that time of waiting. There were two stories in the Bible that I thought I'd share, but quickly, the one about Joseph, you all know in Genesis 45, and the story of Joseph and his process where you know jo Joseph as a young man who was treated so unkindly and horribly by all his brothers. And eventually he was sold into slavery. He ran into problems after problems and issues after issues. And then he still remained faithful. Joseph never take his eye off God's purpose. He never ever did that. And in that whole journey, after 13 or so years of patiently enduring all the troubles, Joseph's patience was eventually rewarded when he became the Pharaoh's second in command. And years later, when he was reunited with his brothers, this is what he said. Imagine after all those years of waiting, picture yourself in whatever situation you are in. And you having to wait. And you say, God, but why? Why, why? Joseph says to his brothers, come close to me. And when they had done so, he says, I am your brother Joseph. The one you sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed. And do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you for two years now. There has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth. And to save your lives for, for a great deliverance. There was purpose in Joseph's time of waiting because eventually God brought him to a place of where he became a savior to his family and to nations. A very good real example for those of you that can remember and I think all of you will, 9-11, 5-10 years after 9-11, you're listening to all the reports, you're reading the stories about how so many people was meant to be in the Twin Towers and yet certain things held them back. Either an accident, either running late at home, either the doors were locked and they couldn't get out, etc., etc. And it was a timing of God for God not to get them there. And oftentimes when these things happen, we fight and we push God only later to realize God has something different in mind. Now, Portia, I want you to help me, and I know I didn't plan this, but I love putting you on the spot because you know you are my wife and you are my helpmate. You know the Bible says they are helpmate. Come, babes. 
come, come, come. You know, they help me. Isn't that what you told the lady? Yes, you said help me. That's what the Bible says. Help me. So, the Bible says that they are our help me. Right? Thank you, Shay. Um, help me. So, a help me is meant to help. You know why God made them help me? All of you are married. And all of those are not married yet. Why did God make them a help me? Because God knew we egotistical guys. God knew the men are egotistical and we think like we know it all. When he first made us, because he made the man first, hey, we the boss, we the head of the home. You didn't hear what the pastor said. But pastor also said, we your help meet. Who God gives a help me to? Who? Those who don't know how to do everything. And the wife said, oh, you missed a good place to say amen, ladies. Are you sleeping on me early this morning? And the lady said, you're a helpmeet for a purpose. Because we guys don't know everything. Mr. Frank, you am I right? We, we need Mrs. Frank. We need them in our lives. I'm giving you a real life lesson. Has to be lost because if we don't understand that, our marriages won't be secure and strong as it should be. You understand? See, Portia knows she's not the head. I know that I'm the head, but not to control her. What did we learn the other day? Not for a, not to put a lid, but for protection. Remember? So, I was going to be talking about Abraham. And I was going to be talking about Abraham. He waited 25 years to see God to fulfill his promise. Right? Mm -hmm. And then, what was the promise? Isaac, the son, in Genesis 12. But he is also, he demonstrated all his patience in those years to trust God in other times as well. So God gave Abraham the promise, okay? And Abraham and God says, you're going to get a son. Mm -hmm. What happened in Genesis 16? You were preaching to me the other day. Sarai. And Hagar. Hagar. There's a mic there, babes. <laughs> Try and remember. Try and remember. Yes. What I do remember is that Sarai, because that mm. is S A R I A I mm. first, she was the one who was actually impatient mm. because she knew she, you know, hadn't had a child as yet. She was the one who actually asked Abraham to go and take Hagar and conceive mm. a child with with her with with her. Mm. And um, what happened was Abraham listened to her mm. and. Um, of course, uh, Hagar fell pregnant, and but what happened after that is that she then started to be cruel to to Hagar, mm. and that's when Hagar ran away, and she actually was stopped by an angel, as mm. you would know, and was told to go back. There's what the angel said. Okay. Yes. And so that. Was and what was born out of that? Ishmael. Yes. And what was the big? issue there that who that who was were they patient or impatient Sarah wasn't patient she should have waited in God's timing and he would given have given her and Abraham Isaac and he was and if you understand the Bible and if you don't understand it that's also okay it's it's just reason for us to go and study more you'll understand that the birth of Ishmael has brought about a major major issue on this earth major if, if major if read Genesis 16 12 mm. it says he will be a wild donkey of a man mm. his hand will be against everyone mm -hmm. and everyone's hand against him Whew. and he will live in hostility to o toward all his brothers mm. and, that is so true. and eventually Abraham was 86 years old yeah yeah when he was 99 when Isaac when was Isaac born. eventually came and out of Isaac's lineage Eventually, Jesus came. If you study the whole line down the thing, look here. Me and you are having our own lesson. Watch here. <laughs> look at here. From Abraham. Hey? The whole line eventually came down. You saw that? Mm -hmm. Leah, all the way down. So that means if God is telling you 
in my time, I'm going to do something. And you go ahead of your time and do it in your own time. You could just be stopping the greatest thing in your tribe down the line. You could be the one that could sever that in the spirit. And like I was talking to a group of pastors this week in a meeting where we concerned about a generation that is lost. One generation is 40 years, Rani, 40 years. To regain 40 years is not easy. 40 years is a huge period of time. And that is why we have to be on the cutting edge with God. And even if we are not understanding, just be open for God to teach. You understand? Because not everybody is going to understand and get the revelation. Let's be honest. I was sitting in church how many years? I never get the revelation of so many things. Doesn't mean God doesn't love me. No. But God will work it out for your good in your time. Do you agree on that? Say amen. amen. What else, love? Uh, just one more thing. That, you know, um, with Sarah, she actually had a good relationship with Hagar. Because that was her maidservant. I'm sure you know that, right? Mm. And she came from Pharaoh's palace. And they had a good relationship for her to actually ask for Sarah to be, uh, for Hagar to be the one to be with her husband mm. meant she trusted her, mm. right? But what happened to that relationship? That impatience caused that relationship to turn sour mm. because next minute Hagar is running away because Sarah is now cruel to her. Mm. So look how it can also not just affect the lineage, lineage, but also relationships. Just relationships. You can mm. mess other things up as well with I mean, the impatience. Mm. Amen. You have to give that teaching on friendship. I know you said it's for ladies, but you better sharpen it up for the men too. It has to be spoken, Portia, the subject on friendship, the one that you spoke on. What am I waiting for? Every one of us waits for different things at different times. Some of us are waiting for a job or even a new job if you're in an existing job. Or if you are in a job, you are waiting for a promotion. God, when is it my time to be promoted? I struggled with that for several years of wanting to be promoted and get to senior management, executive level, and etc., etc. And I remember in the early times of getting into employment how I messed things up. And then when I was serving in church... I understood the power of serving, and when I got the revelation of serving, I translated that in the workplace, and I said, I'm here to serve. Let me do the function and don't uh, run after the title. Eventually, the titles came and followed me. Can somebody say amen? amen? And that is why you cannot be distracted by titles in this world, because titles are there. They will come to you in God's time, but if you go and take the title beforehand, it is like when I was a kid in growing up, I eat the mango green, I get indigestion and I struggle. The mango must be eaten when it is ripe. I know you put chili powder and all that, that's okay, but you still struggle. But if you eat it ripe, you don't get indigestion and struggle. And chili powder gives you all those other issues. There's a time to take that fruit off the tree. And just like that in your life, there's a time for all of these things to happen. Maybe you're waiting for a new house or a car. Or you're even waiting for a husband or a wife. Or you're waiting for feedback on something. You've spoken to people or you've approached the companies or the banks or whatever. And they haven't given you feedback yet. Maybe you're waiting for the call. Or maybe you're waiting for your healing. Or your deliverance. Or you're waiting for an inheritance. Or a breakthrough. Or you're waiting for favor. Or maybe you're just waiting for God to speak. God says, wait, I'm handling this. Patience is being in a position of hope and expectation. When you understand patience, two words besides I said earlier, faith and trust. You are in a position of hope and you're in a position of expectation because you're waiting on God to move. And both those words are positive words in the kingdom. 
They are positive words because when you are waiting, if you are just waiting idle and you are waiting without, then that means you're just existing and there's no purpose. But in hope, there's purpose. In expectation, there's purpose. And while you are hoping, here's the secret. Stay connected to God. Because in your time of waiting, it is the, one of the most dangerous times because temptation comes to lure us away from what God wants us to do and we get distracted and our connection to God is severed and gets cut and we are then cut off from where God wants to take us and it is again like the blind leading the blind. Remember, there is a natural delay between planting and harvesting. You cannot get the mango immediately when you plant the tree. We're doing some building at home. There was a mango tree there, beautiful one. The builders transplanted it. So good they are, they cut all the roots out. That thing is half dead now. I don't even know what to do, whether it's going to grow. I'm waiting to eat the mangoes and let alone that thing growing. So I don't know. But there is a natural delay between planting and harvesting. And you have to know that there is a waiting season for that. So let us get a little bit deeper and understand. So why wait? Why wait? Isaiah 40 verse 28. I'm not too sure if you can pull that on on the right hand side. Isaiah 40 28 says, Do you not know and have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God and he is the creator of the ends of the earth? And he will not grow tired or weary and, in, and increases the power of the weak. And the Bible says, even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, another translation says, those who wait in the Lord, what will happen? They will renew their strength. And they will soar on wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. So the reason we wait is because the promise or the end picture is dependent on the process of God. The reason God makes us wait and the reason why we have to understand patience is because there is a, there is a process that God is working in us and the end picture is is dependent on that process. And it's often time said that it is where we have this dilemma and it's our time versus God's time frame. And that's the constant battle that we have every day. And we want something, we want it now, and we don't want to wait. And that is why the world makes it such that, you, you heard this term many years ago, and everyone thinks that everything has to be like a microwave concept. You get it done, you want it now. But while we wait, God is working in us. God and patience, by the way, is also what? Who can remember? One of the? Yes. Patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit. There's nine fruit. Every one of us has to eventually get to a place where we bear those nine fruit. Right? I'm struggling with those nine. I must be honest. Some days I'm looking for some of those fruit. I'm thinking Portia took all of them. You know? And I'm saying, where's my fruit? But all of us have to bear those nine fruit. Patience is one of them. And while we wait, this is what's happened, as the Bible says in Isaiah 40, we will soar, we will run, we will walk. Why will that happen? Because Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God knows the plans. So if God knows the plans, why go ahead of it, our time? God knows the plans. There are plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future, plans to give you hope. So if God knows it and that is the promise, why must I go ahead of my time and mess things up and eat the mango and I get indigestion? The indigestions of life. Maybe that should have been my, my title today. The next slide says, who are you waiting for? And this is key. Lester, who are you waiting for? Psalm 40 says... Verse 1, David says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. Who did David wait for? The Lord to help him. 
He did not wait for those around him or his friends or his boss or his spouse or his children or whatever. David waited patiently for the Lord to help him and he turned to me and he heard my cry. Somebody say amen. amen. God will hear your cry if he hasn't already. For he lifted me out of the pit of despair and out of the mud and the mire and he set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along because I was not steadied because I was not patient. But as I became patient, I began waiting on the Lord and as the Lord did what he always does, he steadied my feet and I was not Walking helter skelter, I knew where I was. And verse 3 says, He has given me a new song to sing. A hymn of praise to our God. And you can be in a time of waiting and your attitude is going to determine where God is going to take you. Because we need to be like David and sing a song of praise in our time of waiting. Can someone say amen? Because that is where some of the tests lie. Are we complaining? Are we unhappy? Can you see it on your face? Listen, sometimes you know, you go to functions, you go to family, you go to meetings, you go to work, and you walk in, and you're all happy, and you're excited, and someone's there with a long face, and they with a contrary spirit. You can pick it up like that when you have the joy of the Lord in you, but let me say this to you today. Listen to what I'm about to say, which is very, very important. Don't ever allow the contrary spirits to dictate to you. Don't ever allow the joy that you have to be stolen because of somebody's impatience and their bad attitude. Don't ever allow that. I like what somebody said last night I heard. And she said, in my house, there's no word called depression. And I want you to jump up and say, praise the Lord. And many of us allow certain things in our homes and we don't know that we are the cause of bringing in contrary spirits. There's no form, there's no place in our homes for contrary spirits. And many will see what he has done and be amazed and they will put their trust in God. Jehovah Jireh, everybody say Jehovah Jireh. Genesis 22, you know the story. And Isaac was about to be put onto the altar. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. And that's where that word came. Just as God provided a ram in, as a substitute for Isaac, He provided His son Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice. God is going to meet all our needs. Can someone say amen? amen. And I believe God and His promises. Say it after me. Say, I believe... God and His promises. You see, that's where it needs to start. Because if you truly believe that, you'll be in peace. Because God answers yes, no, and wait. And I taught you this several times. He says yes, and He gives you what you want. He says nobody gives you something better. And then He says wait. And the only time He says wait is for those that have grown in Him. And if God is making you wait, trust me on this, my dear friends. That means you've grown in God. That means you've grown. Because the only people God makes to wait are those who has grown in Him. God's not going to make a baby wait. He won't make a baby wait. So lift your hands and say, thank you God that I've grown in you. That alone is enough to give Him glory. When we're in a time of waiting. And when we're in a time of waiting, He says, wait for the best is yet to come. Let's give God a shout of praise. Amen. I want to leave you with a quote before I close today. And I quite uh, like this when I read it a while back. When going through my notes, this came up. In life, there are two things that define you. Are you ready? A, your patience when you have nothing. So when you have nothing, the patience that you have, how are you behaving when you're patient? How are you as a person? How are you as an individual? How is your character? How is your, you understand, your, your, how, your makeup? 
What type of person are you in your time of waiting? And another time you are defined is this. B, your attitude when you have everything. And many times we get what we want after our time of waiting. And because we don't really comprehend and get the lesson in waiting, we take what we have and pride enters. Always guard against pride. Pride ruined many good men and many good women. And we must always guard against that. For we may just not enter into where God wants us to be. And let me conclude with this as we all stand. God is always on time. Amen. Amen. Say it after me. Say, God is always on time. time. Say, God is is always always on time. time. Say, God is is always always on time. He's never early. He's never late. He's an on-time God. And so, my dear friends, as I conclude this message today, I had many experiences where we found that we wanted certain things done our way. And we wanted things done the way we wanted it because... We thought we knew better. And only to realize months or years later that God's ways are higher than our ways. And when someone prays that scripture or reads that scripture or you read it in the word, it does not sit immediately. It does not come as revelation. But when it happens to you, you know... God's time, He makes all things beautiful. And that is why His ways are higher than our ways. And so are His thoughts. And if we can only just get to that place to say, God, I resign myself to that fact today. That your ways are higher than our my ways. And so are your thoughts. There will be so much of unnecessary stress that will leave you in Jesus' name. Just by trusting God. Faith and trust. A two-edged sword in your hand that's going to produce in you extraordinary blessings. And I pray today over your life. Raise your hands, every one of you. Lord, today over every home, every marriage, every husband, every wife, every grandpa, grandma, every grandchild, every individual that is here, married or unmarried, every one of them online as well. I pray God that they will understand the power of patience. And leaving it in your hand, is a far better thing to do than to do it our way. And I pray, O God, that this fruit of the Spirit will come alive in somebody's life today. And God, they will walk in the revelation of this Word and in the power of this Word and they will see and understand the goodness of God. And in their patience, O God, sometimes they're waiting, God, when is my wife going to understand me? God, why doesn't she understand me the way I want her to? But God is saying, I want to deal with you first. You are more to me than what you think. I want to deal with you first. You are more important to me, says the Lord. It's not your will, no, it's not your plan, it's not your way, but my way, says the Lord. It's my will. 
that has to come to pass not your will but my will says the Lord I release that blessing today oh God over your children that they will become stronger in the area of patience that you will grow them oh God from the inside out that you will get them so ready oh God that their next miracle supernatural miracle is around the corner and we know oh God that you are a good God just like moms and dads here will never give a bad gift to their child because they know that there is a time of waiting so do you so do you so do you Lord know why we have to wait it's not bad to wait it's not embarrassing to wait but god says wait on me wait on me wait on me wait on me says the lord let us bow our heads as we close in prayer right now thank you jesus amen Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we are so thankful that we could be here in your presence, Lord. Thank you, mighty God, for teaching us about waiting on you, Lord. We know, God, that as we wait on you, we shall renew our strength, Lord. Thank you for renewing our strength this morning. Thank you for peace in our hearts and for peace in our minds, God. Thank you, Lord, for the joy that you have given us today that has given us added strength as we enter into this new week, Lord. Bless us now as we leave until we meet again next week and on Tuesday. In your holy and mighty name, amen.